Welcome to the Have Good Ripple Effect podcast. Let's jump right in. Hello and welcome back to the Have Good Ripple Effect podcast. I'm Lisa Even, your host, and today we're talking all about living in the lab. Now, I want you to imagine me with like big, clear, like lab goggles and a beaker and a lab coat, because I feel like that's what the last year has been for me. I gave myself permission at the beginning of last year to say, I am going to live in the lab. I'm going to run a set of experiments and I'm going to see what result I get. And it was things in my personal life and my professional life. I basically had a sheet of experiments that I wanted to run, one of which was to actually write a book. And in one of the episodes, uh, one of our future episodes, I'll talk all about the process of how I actually wrote the book. But the first order of business was to say, okay, if I was to try it, right? Because it's like we spend a lot of time thinking about certain things before we do them. So for me, it was this like idea of if I was going to run an experiment, which we know experiments might blow up in our face, what would that look like? What would it take for me to give myself permission to run a small experiment to say, what does it feel like or look like to be an author? And that was one of the big experiments. But there were other things too of, I want to experiment with different types of workout classes. I want to experiment with different types of, you know, prioritization tools and to-do lists. Like it was all over the board this last year for me. And living in the lab became almost my mantra of it is okay and you should fail. You should have some things blow up a little bit in your face. And Lisa, in order to go to the next level, you have to try some new things. And so that was what I decided I would do. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, that feels a little bit scary. But for me, labeling something new with this idea that I was going to just do a small experiment it meant that I wasn't a complete and total failure in all things. Now, growing up, there were certain things that I probably carried with me longer than I should have thinking, well, I'm not great at that and I'm not great at this. And so therefore, I'm not great. And I, it's easy to sometimes say like, okay, if this doesn't work, it's a knock on my entire identity. Now, if you live in a lab, you're going to run many of it, many experiments. And so if one blows up, it has nothing to do with the other. And for me, that's what I needed to hear. I needed to hear, okay, run an experiment in this corner of your life, see if it works, take what you like and leave the rest. So in 2023, I wrote a book called Joy is My Job. And I also started some new events. I'm testing out in 2024, this podcast thing. And you'll probably see like, yeah, there are some fails. There are some episodes that I maybe wasn't as eloquent or the topic wasn't as fleshed out. But for me, it's like saying, but that was a component that I tested to see if I actually liked it. Right. It's not a forever thing. I may not always do a podcast. And if I want to take my book down from Amazon, I can. But what I'm finding is actually most of the experiments I'm running are good. Now, I want you to reflect just a little bit on if there's a dream in your pocket. And it could be a big dream or a small dream. But is there something that you have always wished you could do or have always wanted to do? But you've kind of said to yourself, like, either it's not the time, I'm busy, I have kids, I've got stress, I've got life. Or maybe you're like, I don't even know where to begin. Where to begin? What does that look like for you? Because if I gave you a post-it note and said, okay, fill that little baby up, fill that post-it note, there are probably two, three, maybe four things on that list. What if I told you, you won't actually completely fail at these things, but instead you're going to give yourself permission to live in the lab. Now, how does that feel? Does that feel easier? At least it did for me because I thought, I'm so worried about failing that I'm not actually fulfilling on much. Now, there have been things like writing a book where I said to myself, okay, what will they say? What will people think and what will they say? And I, it's almost like a, an armor, it's like a coat of armor that I've put on 
And I have just come up with the almost the phrase that I or the saying that I'm going to use back to someone if they say my book isn't good or this podcast isn't good. And here's what it is. And this is one of the strategies I want to give you today. There's going to be two. This one's the first one. The first thing I'm going to say to someone, if they say, hey, your book wasn't very good or that was, you know, your podcast, ugh, like I had to quit listening because I didn't like it. I am going to say, thank you. Now tell me about you. What are you doing this year that seems big and hard and scary? Because for me, it was the book and the podcast, but what are you doing? And it's almost like me holding up a very kind and gentle mirror to say, gosh, if you are not failing, you are not stretching yourself. If I am not missing, it's almost like shooting you know, a three-point shot. If I am not taking shots, that means I'm not making shots. And yeah, I'm going to take a lot of shots and there are a lot that I'm not going to make. But I want to invite people, even those people that maybe criticize what I'm up to, I want, I want to be like, but you, but you could, you should, like, if you can do it better, like get out there. My, I had a good friend who once said, you know, people aren't going to criticize you. Like people who are doing a lot and trying new things aren't going to criticize other people for doing that because they know what it takes. It takes a little bit of bravery and courage and a hell of a lot of permission to give yourself room to experiment. Now, maybe you're thinking, yeah, uh, I don't know. Here's how I look at things. I often think about that first time feeling. That first time feeling, which is usually the, even in this podcasting space, this is my first season. I'm like, oh gosh, I just feel a little stiff. I don't feel like I'm the courageous and brave Lisa that I could be, but I'm giving myself to time to think, okay, I want to be in that first time feeling. What does it first feel like when you start putting in those repetitive, you know, those reps, those repetitive movements of like shooting a free throw or kicking a soccer goal? Like the first time you do it, it feels weird, <laughs> but after you've done it a hundred times, it just feels like old hat. You've done it forever. And so I invite you to consider that you will have some first-time feelings when you do something new, but that's normal. Now, I often check myself with what is the story that I'm telling myself? What is the story that I'm telling myself of, you know, before I go out and do anything? Well, no one will like it. They're going to probably say this or that. And it's almost like I'm making up a story before the story even unfolds. And so oftentimes I'll write that down and I'll just almost put it in like a file folder because it's like, hi, I need to get that story that I'm telling myself out of my brain and onto paper so that I can ignore it <laughs> and give myself permission to live in the lab. Now, if you're thinking, Lisa, I've got a dream and I get the idea of giving myself permission, but I don't even know where to start. My advice to you, and this is the second strategy today, is to just start making a list of what are some of the things that you would need in order to make it happen. And that's what I did for podcasting. I made a list. I was like, okay, I don't actually know what goes into it, really. But I know that I would need a better microphone. I would need someone to help me think about how to structure the episodes. You know what? I have like a little cheat sheet off to the side that you can't see. And hopefully you can't see me like peeking at it every once in a while. But I needed someone to help me think about what do I say at the beginning? Like, hi, I'm Lisa Even. Right? I needed someone to help me like craft that. And I will probably need somebody to help me think through like, how do I end an episode? And I just jotted those down. And I was almost in essence making a pile of tasks or things that I needed to learn. So if you have a dream, I want you to make a list of the things that you might need. No, there's going to probably be eight to 10 to 20 more things that you're going to need that you don't even know that you know that you need yet, right? <laughs> when I started thinking about podcasting, I was like, okay, I have a microphone, I'm ready. And then I'm like, how do I do it? And so I, I wrote down, I need to find someone who can teach me. And I've actually got on a number of podcasts as guests. And at the end, after you interview a guest, usually like they hit the stop recording. And then I'll be like, okay, tell me about how it felt to do your first episodes. Like, what's your best advice? And I was just kind of gathering the information that I needed in order to be able to say, okay, I think I've got some 
things that I know I need. I think I've got some things that I know I need to learn. And I'm also starting to think about like where I could put that in my life. Because that's really what it is, is you saying, okay, what is it? How is it? Why is it? When is it? And then kind of starting to take that first step. So if you've got a dream, get that list of what you might need to make it happen and then start to set up small experiments. Now I do them in threes. So oftentimes I'll take a post-it note and I'll actually jot down. I have the longer kind, like not the three by three, but I think this might be like, I don't know, three by five, maybe three by four. And then I will jot down what are like the first couple of things I need to do. And these I consider experiments. Like the first thing I need to do is find someone who can tell me about it. Now, the first person I come to and they're like, it's so easy. I know how to do it. It's like all the things, right? I'm like, whoop. Okay, need another, need another person. But I just set up small incremental experiences almost or tasks that I can say I might fail in this micro moment, but that does not make me a failure overall. Now, I wish you could see the bloopers of my first episode recording. It was awful. (laughs) And because I was robotic and I didn't know how to do the buttons and my screen wasn't facing the right way and I didn't have my notes taped up onto like my laptop properly, there were a million things that if you looked at it, I would have said little bit, little baby failure right there, right? Like blew up in my face. However, as soon as I got past that first time feeling, I started to realize like, oh, I can do this. It just took me a little bit to realize that I was failing forward. Now, if you're listening a year from now, I hope that I've got amazing guests and so much traction on this podcast. And you almost say to me like, Lisa, gosh, do you remember when? And I'll laugh and be like, oh yeah, I remember when. I started and I was a little bit awful, but I kept going and I moved into a little bit awesome. That's my hope. And I think that if you're looking at your next year and saying, okay, what are some of the dreams, big or small, because you need a couple of both. If you started to put those on paper or maybe a note in your phone or somewhere on the computer, whatever works best for you, do that. Start thinking about what would it take to make that happen? What would I need to know? What would I need to do? What would I need to learn about? And then start setting up small experiments. Live in the lab. That's my advice to you. Now, I hope to live in the lab until I'm 100 years old where I'm still trying new things. And some of them are going to be awesome and other ones we're going to all laugh together. (laughs) But I invite you to fail forward. Live in the lab and just get going. Today's your day. And if anything, you happen to the world, not the other way around. Now, if you like what you're hearing, like and subscribe on today's episode. Share with a friend. Maybe there's someone in your life who has an amazing idea or wants to do something and just needs that little like oof, little shove forward. And then leave a review. Let me know if you liked it and what you heard. And I cannot wait to hear how you're going to be living in the lab in the next year. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Visit lisaeden.com to learn about events and grab a copy of my book, Joy is My Job.